Let's talk about cutting wire. You're going to cut a lot of wire and cable, and a pair of wire strippers is a perfect tool to cut through these soft materials like copper and aluminum. So you can cut through an entire cable. There are three conductors in here, and you'll push this cable to the back of these jaws where the cutting edges are, and then you'll just add a little bit of pressure. It doesn't take much. They're gonna cut through really cleanly. You can cut your cable to length, you can also cut the individual conductors inside. So here I have a 14 gauge conductor that would be inside of my Romex, and that set of blades inside will cut this wire very cleanly and very easily. Let's talk about stripping wire. You will do a lot of end preparation on these wires to either make wire-to-wire -wire connections or wire-to-terminal connections. That starts with stripping the insulation off of the end to expose the bare conductor. The way you're going to do that is take those wire strippers that you were using before and the middle section of the jaws have notches in them. These notches have numbers corresponding to them and the numbers are related to the gauge of wire that they will fit over. So you can see here on the presentation, it starts with a 10 gauge set of notches and it goes up to an 18 gauge. This set here is going to go from 10 gauge up to 20 gauge. So I have more of a range on this set of wire strippers than on the set pictured in the presentation. So once you get the right notches matched up with the gauge of wire that you're using, you're going to squeeze the pliers together over the insulation. These uh, these blades inside of those notches will cut only through the, the insulation and it will not cut into the conductor. You can then ease up on the handles just slightly and then pull that piece of insulation off of the end of that conductor. What you're left with is a bare end that can then be spliced to another wire or be attached to a terminal connection. So let's do a demonstration of the whole process of stripping the end of a wire. I'm going to use my little close-up box here to give you a better view and hopefully we'll get some good shots here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of Romex to a length that I can work with. Using my wire cutters, I have a length of wire here and using the tips of these wire cutters, I can pull the conductors out. Don't forget the third purpose of these wire strippers is that they also can bend and pinch wire. So they're good for reaching small things like these conductors. So now I have a conductor. It has insulation all the way to the end. I want to expose, say, 5 eighths of the end of this conductor. So I'm, I know that I'm working with 14 gauge wire. It's important that you're able to identify the gauge of your wire so that you can then match it to your wire stripper notches. So I'm going to line up the 14 gauge notches right on my wire and I'm going to pull them tight. It has, you can even feel it cut through that insulation. Now that it's cut through, I can ease up on the handles just a little bit to give it clearance to pull off. And now I can pull that insulation off and the insulation will slide right off. It's going to expose the end of that conductor. If, if you have too much exposed, you can cut now just this one conductor back to the right length you need for whatever job you're getting ready to do with this wire. So let's repeat that whole process on the other end of this wire. So I have a piece of uh, 14 gauge wire. I'm going to match that 14 gauge wire with my 14 gauge notches. I'm going to find the location where I want to cut the insulation. Pull the handles together. You're going to feel it cut that insulation. You can ease up on the handles a little bit. And then as you pull the insulation away, it's going to slide off of that conductor. Now I've exposed my end. If you see me struggling here, I'm not used to working in a small space like this in this box. So this should be a little easier for you if you're not working for the camera. Let's talk about wire to wire connections. What we need to do is once we have stripped the ends off of these wires, we know we need to connect all of them together. So we're going to hold them very close together with all of the ends even. And then we're going to twist them together using our lineman's pliers. This is a, our wide jaw pliers. We're gonna grip the very ends of all of the conductors and twist them all together evenly. As you see here, I'm twisting together three different conductors and you need a nice 
tight bind between all of those conductors. Once you get them bound all together very tightly, there's no movement, you can then clip the ends off evenly. Now you're ready to put on a wire nut. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to start demonstrating only two wires. It's, it's often that you're going to connect multiple wires. It could be anything from two wires on up. So here I have two wires and they're stripped. I have one that's just a little longer than the other one. That's no problem because I'm going to take my wire cutters and snip them off so that they're both even. Now that I have my wires even on the ends, I'm going to grab the end with my lineman's pliers and I'm going to twist them together. I'm just going to continue to wind them together and they're going to make, they should be connecting evenly. So you want a nice even braided twist to them. And we're going to continue to make them tighter and tighter until they're wound from the back to the front. That is a good start. Now we need to trim them so that they'll fit into our wire nut. Often these ends won't be as nice and pointy as I have them here. So it's always a good practice to then trim them off evenly at the end. Now we're ready for our wire nuts or our wire nut. It's only now that we can put this wire nut on. I've seen many times people try to clamp wires together loosely and then use the wire nut, you cannot guarantee that that process will work and keep these wires secure. So now that they're tight, now I can put on my wire nut and I'll twist it in the same direction that I twisted those wires together. And when I see the insulation start winding tighter, then I know that I've got a nice connection there. So I have a tight connection from my wire nut to my conductors and I know that that is going to be a nice, solid, permanent connection. The more wires you have to twist together, the more of a challenge this will be to do it. Here I have three conductors. They're all the same. This is a 14 gauge conductor and I need to twist or splice all of them together. You want them as close together as possible. You want all the ends even and you need them together to the point that we can grab them with our lineman's pliers. So I'm going to hold them tight as a bundle, grab them at the end with the lineman's pliers, hold them very tightly, and then I'm going to start twisting them together. And you want to make sure that you get a nice even twist on these. That is the challenge and it's the way that you're going to end up with a very good connection. So you can make some adjustments and twist them until you get a nice, even, tight bind of all of them. If you have one conductor in the center and the other two twisting around it, that's not ideal and you're going to end up with problems. So make sure that they're all twisting around evenly. So once we get them twisted, we can clean up the end by cutting them. Don't forget about your cutters in the backs of your lineman's pliers. Now it's time for the wire nut. Remember, you need to twist the wire nut on in the same direction that you tighten the wires. I always go in a clockwise motion from the direction that the tool would be turning. And keep in mind, you're gonna twist them as tight as you possibly can. You'll know you're done when you start to see the insulated jackets of the conductors start winding around each other. You can always give it a pull or a tug at the end to test it. Now we have a good connection of our three 14 gauge wires.